where is the ground located again? And then as we're just about to touch down, we, we almost flew over the top of this, this ground here. So, oh, there it is. It's a magnificent group of islands. Yeah, that's another way to get here if you don't want to come by plane. Very big sailing area, very big yachting area. Yachting season now just about tapering off because uh, the hurricane season is beginning to come in now. As you, you run the risk of setting the spinnaker out and ending up in Miami or, or somewhere. The, the shot of the, the Caribbean Sea and the island of Beckway on one side and then on the other side just adjoining the Arnesvale playing field is the airport, the Abadiza T Joshua Airport where several planes are uh, of that size you can't take the big jets, the big international jets they have to be transported, the tourists who do come in they land in Barbados or Trinidad and then uh, come over by the smaller aircraft. They're talking about building uh, an international airport here as well. And just look how close the airstrip is to the ground. As usual, a big crowd in Arnesville had one test match here but usually it's uh, only been one day internationals on the ground Johanna just find it difficult to get the ball away here some pressure building out there Yusuf Johanna the last two shots he's played defensive shots into the offside with Chris Gale hovering at a shortish cover and Yusuf Johanna has set off He's trying to sneak that quick single. That's over. Very good over from Cullimore. It's a maiden over, 70 for two after 17. If you honey, you just sense there's a little bit of pressure building and at times he does some silly things with his running between the wickets. He just hits that into the gap and he's assuming his partner, someone but is gonna come. If he commits another meter down the pitch, then he will not be able to get back in time. So it's something he needs to be aware of. And he's probably making his uh, partner but just a little nervous at the moment. Wavell Hines to continue now. Edge, no slip, and third man is too square to prevent it going for four. Well, he wouldn't have a slip to the medium pacer at this stage. Nice relief for the Pakistan total. I'll take them any old how, and that was an educated outside edge, but seeing the ball full and a little bit wide. Gave it 100%, and... He's got that one fine enough. And fine again. But this time the third man will get around. It's Bradshaw. You only take the one. I reckon that um, it won't be very long before they realise that Bradshaw's throwing arm is weak. Normally that would have been two. The South Africans had caught on to it. And he had to get around as well. He's a left-hander. He's got a weak throwing arm. the little things you need to notice as a batsman isn't it Very early on need to pick out who the strong fielders are the guys who can field on the boundary and whip it in over the bales 
And then also, the fieldsmen have a weak arm in the deep. Bradshaw there, a bit of a powder puff, wasn't it, from the, the outfield? And I'm sure the next time round, they'll come back for the second on the throw. Right back on the restriction area. So an easy single. Just some pressure ease now after that maiden from Cullimore. Six have come off four deliveries. It's interesting, Tony, there's been a few uh, recommendations in just modifying this one-day game, and one of the suggestions is actually re being able to substitute fieldsmen. I think another one is being you can pull a batsman off, a coach can and say, we're going to change batsmen. So there's some interesting ideas being put forward. I don't know that I agree with all of them. I don't think we need to meddle with the game too much, but... Here they are. Yeah, they're, they're going to the ICC proper. That's from the cricket committee headed by Sunil Gavaskar, the former Indian, Indian opening batsman and captain. Field restrictions just for the first 10. Then additional blocks of five overs and the fielding captain can say when he wants those five overs put in. You mentioned the soccer style substitutes. There can be replaced at any stage of a match. And of course, uh, Soccer itself and other sports, hockey, field hockey, for instance, didn't have substitutes for a long time. There's Cullimore. But um, certainly I, I feel that not only in the one-day game, as far as substitutes are concerned, but in the test game as well for, for someone who is clearly injured in the field of play or on the field of play, where they can be substituted. I remember West Indies losing by 20 odd runs to Australia in the test match in Port of Spain in 1973. And uh, one of their main batsmen, Lawrence Rowe, not being able to bat in either innings because he so badly twisted his ankle. Now that really upset the balance of the match. Um, whereas I think soccer has got it right. They've said, well, look, we can have uh, substitutes. But it took a long time for them to come into it. And the same thing with field hockey. Field hockey now has what they call rolling substitutes. So you can substitute the player. A player can come on and off regularly. Maybe we, cricket doesn't want to go that far that quickly. But surely if a player is injured and you're down to 10 men for the match, it just shifts the entire balance of, uh, of power. Good judgment there for that single. Yeah, of course, uh, the substitute we refer to as far as the one dares are concerned is for tactics rather than for injury. Technological changes as well. A trial to be undertaken at the Super Series on field umpires to consult with the TV umpire on any aspect of any decision. And then earpieces to be used at ICC events to help the on field umpires to judge faint edges. to remain an on-the-field matter. And they've rejected the proposal for two neutral umpires in one-day internationals. I'm not sure what they've done with the proposal that I put in that uh, commentators should have champagne for lunch along with <laughs> a lobster thermidor on a regular basis. In the meantime, Pakistan at 80 for two in the 19th over. with all the, the changes proposed Tony there's a, a bit of a few roars being going on back in Australia and it's, it's hit the press worldwide and 
to do with Ricky Ponting's bat that he uses and the fiberglass that is actually attached to the back of the blade, which he says doesn't improve the quality of it. It's more a cosmetic thing. And so there's been a stringent policy put in place that the dimension should be remain the same. That should have a concept. Just work down a third man. And we'll come back to that. 82 for two. Pakistan were sent in after Shudnaran Chandapal won the toss. They've lost to two wickets. And they've got 82 for two on the board. This is over number 20 from Wavell Hines. Just coming back to the uh, the bat policy. And the second one, they, they should have a conventional shape. The splice and handle to be clearly defined. The blade should be made from a single piece of solid wood. Practice of injecting substances such as cork is to be illegal. Any cover to protect. So the covering to protect, strengthen or repair, not to be improve the strike power. And I suppose that's the issue when it came to Ricky Ponding's bat. And bat should remain the colour of natural wood. And that's the other aspect because it was a carbon fibre on the back of his bat is uh, creating a few issues as well some good desperation in the field and another two to the pakistan total so things just moving along fairly steadily at the moment a run rate of 4.31 i was in Perth, in fact, doing commentary on Channel 9 when Dennis Lilly brought out his aluminium bat in a test match. No one, everyone knew that he was going to bring it, but no one knew what it would sound like. And then he hit the first one, and boing! Everyone just shot up. It would have been something. I, I'm not sure that the Ricky Ponning bat, it, it is still made of, of the, the English willow. And, you know, the carbon fibre is sort of a millimetre thick that is stuck to the back of the, back of the blade. And then the stickers will go on top of that. Great fielding. It's 84 for two. It's the dab attempting to pick out that third man area Marshall leaps in the air and finally they were trying to sneak that quick single it was possibly a run out on offer but thank you very much from the bowler just conclude this bat business long release from the ICC Colomore now to Yusuf Johanna well this guy's slow ball and part of that release says as part of its deliberations the committee also considered the specific case of the kookaburra bat used by several international players as we watch the slow ball from Colomore on ultra motion, which connected with a bat that is within the ICC regulations. Now, plenty of empty space on the leg side. They'll come for a second. That deep mid wicket has to come in a long way. Return to the bowler's end, hits the bat. Well, when you leave that kind of space on the leg side, you're, you're really opening yourself 
to converting singles into twos. And just shot up a little bit on Yusuf Yohana, but it was the right way or the pace off the back to be able to come back for the second. Good judgment in the running. Crucial in one-day cricket. Fielders there now, they'll only get one for this and just one. Had to hurry. Dwayne Bravo the fielder. Now what a contrast. A little push into the onside with the bottom hand from the back got two. And now this one, well struck, barely gets a single. It was a beautiful stroke, and because he was so far on that back foot and his weight going back, he then realized that it's gone like a tracer bullet to the fielder in the deep. And he had to get to the other end as quickly as he could. Yeah, on the Kookaburra bat, which is used, um, as he says, by several international players, I think the majority of them would be Australian, they've agreed that the status quo should remain wherein, which is a nice legal term, these bats can be used by all players pending the final decision from the MCC on their legality in relation to current regulations. Now, if you could just consult your lawyer on that, and he may, be interpret it, may interpret it better than I can for you. But I think what it means is that uh, the bat being used by Ricky Ponting at the moment is uh, is going to be okay. Well, something's happened with the ball, is it? 